We will be concentrating largely on the results of our two insurance companies, Bajaj Alian General Insurance Magic and Bajaj Alian Life Insurance Magic, and uh, also the uh, some of the smaller companies of ours, predominantly Bajaj Finserve Direct and Bajaj Finserve Health. Uh, Bajaj Finance has already had its call yesterday, and, but we would be glad to take any high-level questions on BFL. Uh, we will not be taking any questions on the status of Allianz's stake in our insurance companies, except to state that uh, it has remained the same and there is no change. Any statements that look like forward-looking statements are just estimates and do not constitute an assurance or indication of any future performance result from our side. Uh, as you know, uh, while uh, Bajaj Finsurf prepares its financials in compliance with Indian accounting standards, the two insurance companies are not yet covered by IndiaS and their uh, uh, standalone results are on the Indian gap, uh, basically based on the IIDA's regulations governing uh, preparation of financial statements. However, for the purpose of consolidation, they do provide us with Indias compliant uh, financial statements. Uh, now, let me start with the key highlights for FI24. Actually, the FI24 for us has been a year in which we cross many milestones. Um, Bajaj Finsurf's consolidated total income for the year crossed 1 lakh crores and then we ended at 1 lakh 10,383 crores, which is a 34% year on year increase. Our consolidated profit after tax for FI24 were 8,148 crores, which is 27% higher than the previous year. Even excluding the volatile mark to market unrealized gains of Bajik and Balik, the consolidated profit after tax was 8,180 crores, which is up 21% year on year. Both the consolidated revenue and profit after tax were the highest ever for Bajaj Finsa. Uh, BFL's consolidated AUM exceeded 3,30,000 crores. Magic became the third largest insurer with premium exceeding 20,000 crores, overtaking three public sector companies of long vintage in the process. Bialik, the AUM crossed 1 lakh crores, and Bajaj Finserve Health entered the hospitalization and insurance claim settlement space with the completion of its acquisition of Vidal Healthcare. This acquisition has been approved by the insurance regulator in Q4. Uh, Bajaj Finserve AMC ended the year with an AUM of 9,552 crores, the tad under 10,000 crores, uh, just nine months after the launch of its first fund. Let me give you a brief update on the Vidal acquisition. In the previous quarter, we said that Bajaj Finserve Health has entered into an agreement to acquire Vidal Healthcare Services. And Vidal Healthcare Services, in turn, own Vidal Healthcare TPA, a registered third party administrator under the insurance regulations. This transaction has been completed and the payment for the acquisition has been made in April 2024. Bajaj Finserve Health shall now work from the next quarter over the integration of the business and utilization of the Vidal network and offerings for its customers. The acquisition of VHC uh, significantly augments the capabilities of our healthcare venture in the uh, digital healthcare space, empowering it to provide services to insurance companies, employers, and governments, and will also enable them to cover all customer segments through products, managed care offerings, outpatient services, inpatient hospitalization and claims management, and digital platforms. Between Bajik and Bajaj Finserve Health, we now have the toolkits needed to become a meaningful player in the healthcare services space. Uh, Devan, the CEO of Finserve Health, is with us in this call to take any questions you may have on this acquisition on Finserve Health strategy. Let me now uh, start with the highlights of our consolidated financial results for Q4, which have been put up in our press release uh, a while ago. Our consolidated total income for Q4 up 36% at 32,042 crores, uh, compared with 23,625 crore in Q4 of FY23. And a consolidated profit after tax, a 20% increase at 2,119 crore versus 1,769 crore in the same quarter of the previous year. Um, as I mentioned earlier, since the insurance companies uh, 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 account for unrealized gains or market market gains or losses um, on the equity account, uh, as fair value through profit and loss account, uh, we tend to also, we, we traditionally also disclose the impact on profit of uh, such volatile uh, gains. 
if we were to exclude the impact of these MTM losses and gains, the core profit after tax would have been uh, would have increased by 17% in Q4 FY24. During the quarter, DFL recorded a top line growth of 25%. Uh, growing from 7,781 to 9,714, and a consolidated profit after tax uh, higher by 21% at 3,825 crore versus 3,158 crores. The ROE was 20.5% versus 23.9%, largely because uh, VFL had raised about 9,000 odd crores in uh, Q3 of FY24. Magic recorded top line growth in uh, gross return premium uh, of 32%, 4,962 crore versus 3,766. Uh, profit after tax increased by 18% to 380 crore versus 322 crore. And the ROE was 3.6% versus 3.4%. The combined ratio, as measured as per the IRDA's uh, master circular on uh, financial statements, was 101.6 versus 97.3%. And 97.2% in the same quarter of the previous year. Dialic recorded a top line growth of 27% with gross return premium increasing uh, to 8,183 crore in the quarter compared with 6,434 crore. A profit after tax higher by 321% from 26 crore to 106 crore. Uh, more importantly, the NBV uh, increased by 16% from 415 crore to 480 crore. Uh, more about these companies in my uh, the rest of my uh, presentation. Um, going to the business update on the performance for Q4 and FY24, the external environment was generally favorable for the insurance sector. Some of the challenges to growth posed during the post-pandemic period also receded compared to the previous year. Uh, positive regulatory development in the insurance sector aimed at attaining insurance uh, uh, for all by 2047 continued in FY24. All this created a conducive market for both the life and uh, general insurance sector. And we remain optimistic that the industry will continue to grow given the favorable macro, regulatory changes, low penetration, and relatively positive consumer sentiment. Uh, coming to Badgy. Before I get into performance, I will mention that our claims reserving triangle and the claims pay triangle has been included in our investor presentation. Uh, you may note that for the last few years, we have been doing that once a year, as is the practice in the market. And of the total reserve, we have had uh, a favorable development of about 8%. Bagi continues to be well-reserved. Uh, Bagi continues to uh, balance growth with profitability and consistently delivers a superior combined ratio versus the industry. Uh, it continued its growth momentum, recording above market growth in Q4, as well as all of FY24. Headline gross domestic premium income increased 32.3% during the quarter, well above the industry, which includes private and public multi-line players, growth of 10.9%. And in FY24, its growth of 33.5% was higher than the private sector's 17.5% and the industry's 14.2%. The market share increased to 8.3% in FY24 from 7.1% in FY23, which is more than 100 basis points improvement. Even excluding the tender-driven bulky garment health and crop land, the growth for BASIC uh, is 13.34% as compared to the previous quarter, but it's in excess of the industry growth of 11.5%. GDPI grew by 20.4% for FY24, excluding the tender-driven businesses, versus the private sector 16.4% and the industry 13.3%. This market leading growth was contributed mainly by commercial 14%, group health 46%, retail health 11%, and miscellaneous 95%. On the bottom line, the industry has been significantly impacted by NATCAT events this year, and as you know, larger companies tend to have a greater exposure to NATCAT events, especially those which have a higher book of commercial and corporate businesses. We experienced eight events, mainly North Indian flood, Sikkim flash flood, Tamil Nadu flood, cyclone events such as Cyclone Vipar Joy and Michong during the year as only one flood event in the previous year. The combined ratio for the quarter was higher at 101.6 as again 97.3 percent in Q5 of Q4 of FY24. The higher ratio is on account of higher claims during the quarter. The combined ratio improved to 99.9 percent in FY24 versus 100.5 percent in all of FY23 notwithstanding a NATCAT claims of 118 crores, which is net of reinsurance and reinstatement premiums. The profit after tax for the quarter has grown at a healthy level of 18% from 322 crore to 380 crore, and uh, 
it was higher by 15% for the full year from 1348 crores to 1550 crores. The higher path is attributable to better investment income. Excluding the impact of NACAT claims, the growth in profit would have exceeded 20%. Uh, growth in motor insurance during the quarter was muted. It was 9% for the year, uh, partly because of Bajik's tight focus on writing only preferred categories of business and in line with new auto sales growth of 10%. Bajik continues to adopt a conservative stance on commercial vehicles underwriting. While motor still continues to dominate the business mix, other significant moments in FY24 included significant increase in government health mix by 13%, uh, decrease in crop insurance mix by 4%, Again, the previous year attributable to more prudent selection of the areas where we wanted to participate. In particular, Bagi continues to be conservative in writing large volumes of commercial vehicle insurance, where the growth is only 3% for the year. The claim ratio was 70.3% in Q4, as against 66.4% in Q4 of FY23. The claim ratio was higher than previous on account of higher claim ratio in health and motor TP segments, partially offset by lower commercial and crop claims. Claim ratio for the full year, however, at 73.8% ex nat cats at 72.5% was marginally better than last year at 72.9%. As we highlighted earlier, the earned premium takes time to catch up when the growth is strong, like we have seen with Bajik. The NAP growth this quarter was 18% as again 13% in the previous quarter and 11% on a yearly basis. Over the next six to nine months, this earned pre the premium that we wrote till now will get earned. However, new premium uh, based on the growth we will achieve in FY25 will also get that one. Magic's AUM, including cash, crossed 30,000 crores during the year, growing by 12% to 31,196 crores. Uh, as at March 31, versus 27,809 crore as on 31st March 23. The advanced premium from long-term policies was 1,829 crore at 31st March 2024, which is higher by 26% over March 2023. As we mentioned before, many of the new initiatives which Bajik invested in over the last 18 to 24 months, including focus on smaller tier towns, distribution expansion, doing more with bank insurance partners, and strong presence in large ticket corporate segment has resulted in this performance and will continue to contribute in the coming quarters, we hope. Bajik was further able to capitalize on a small, uh, strong presence in smaller towns and rural areas during FY24. In a market where asset insurance is intensely price competitive, this operating result, we believe, displays Bagi's commitment to a balanced and profitable growth on the back of a deep and broad distribution and prudent underwriting while focusing on best-in-class customer service. In summary, an excellent quarter for Bagic in terms of top-line growth and satisfactory profitability. I must, however, reiterate that insurance is a long-term business and we remain steadfast in our commitment to drive profitable growth, create sustainable value, and always prioritize the interest of our policyholders. I will move to Balik next. During the quarter, Balik continued a strong market-beating growth trajectory and reported an individual-rated premium growth of 17% against flat industry growth and private sector industry growth of 2%. If you recall the last year, we had the tax change where the high ticket traditional policies were brought into the tax bracket and which resulted in a significant amount of sale in the month of March. Therefore, on the back of this high base, the growth achieved by Balik, we believe, is quite commendable. In FY24, IRNB grew by 21%, which is about two and a half times industry growth. Uh, uh, of the private industry growth and about four times the in, uh, overall industry growth, including LIC. Both in FY24 and Q4 of FY24, Bandic was the fastest growing company among the top 10 private players on an IRMB basis, and the market share in individual rated new business or IRMB increased by 100 basis points from 7.6% in FY23 to 8.6% in FY24 among private players. In FY24, Balik ranked sixth among private players on ir &B basis and fourth on new business policies, number of policies under the retail regular business. Newly launched product, participating product LifeAge contributed 1,357 crore. If you recall, this product was launched in Q2 of FY24 and in a space of nine months, it has contributed uh, 
1,357 crores. It has been well received across all channels. The company's growth was secular and driven by all key channels with agency, institutional business and bandic direct growing at 10%, 14% and 63% respectively during the quarter. But more importantly for the year, agency grew 20%, uh, institutional business grew 17% and bandic direct grew 52%. This growth is despite significant one-time benefit in sales during to the impact of the tax change in Q4 of FY23. On the back of strong renewal premium growth, Balik's GWP grew 17% during the quarter and 18% for the year. The consistent growth in renewal premium reflects improvement persistency that Balik has been driving over the last five years. The total number of new policies in OP for Balik grew 22% in FY24 to 7.4 lakhs. Again, one of the highest growth rates among the top 10 companies. During the quarter, Bandit's NBV, new business value, grew by 16% from 415 crore to 480 crore. Clearly, when they have grown better than market, uh, they will get the benefit of operating leverage in Q4, and that is reflected in the higher growth of NBV. Uh, on a yearly basis, NBV growth was 12%, uh, growing from 954 to 1,061 crore. And if you recall, the first quarter uh, was a fairly weak quarter for NBV for banding. So the last three quarters were substantially made up. Overall, the uh, business mix for FY24 on individual rated business was FAR 27%, non FAR 24%, term 4%, annuity 6%, and ULIP 39%. This balance, we believe, is a very strong uh, uh, benefit that Bandic continues to drive. Bandic has continued to focus scaling up agency and direct channel through investing in people, processes, and also institutionalizing on the variableization of agency costs through low-cost models. It has led to Bandic building up one of the largest agency channels in the private life insurance space with more than one and a half lakh agents. Balik is also building on the data and analytics for direct sales through upsell and cross-sell initiatives. It has led to Balik's presence in now in 313 cities with separate verticals for certain key segments of customers. On the institutional business side, the company continues to expand its network of partners and grow existing part partnerships. Balik now has a reasonably large number of bank assurance tie-ups which would help it to reduce uh, concentration risk on Axis Bank. On, on the persistency front, there has been improvement across most cohorts with 13-month persistency ending at 84% and the 61st month persistency at 52%. Profit after tax, as I mentioned earlier, grew from 26 crore in Q4 to 106 crore in Q4 over 524. And Bali had a growth of 44% non patch for the year from 390 crore to 563 crore. This was supported by higher than expected release from the past book and better mortality experience, partly offset by higher new business strain on account of business growth. Malik ended the year with an AUM of 1,9829 crore. Overall, another good balanced quarter for Malik. Finally, as you know, the, both the insurance companies are among the most solvent. Malik with 432% and Malik with 349% and hence are well poised to weather any external adversity. Given the excess capital, we have been paying out dividends from Bandic and Bandic for the last few years. And this year, the dividend has been uh, increased from the previous year. Bandic has declared 661 crore of dividend with a BFS share of 489 crore. And Bandic has declared a dividend of 497 crore with a BFS's own share of 368 crore. BFL has announced a dividend of 2,228 crore, of which 1,144 crore will be for BFL, subject to approval by shareholders. Uh, this, uh, over the last seven years, Bandic has declared a total dividend of 1,605 crore, and Bandic has a dividend of 1,821 crore. And we have been reinvesting the dividends into our emerging businesses, uh, for that venture of direct, uh, Bajaj Venture of Health, and the AMC. Uh, let me move to the lending businesses, BFL and BHFL. I will only briefly touch upon the results, and the results are already available in the public domain. A good quarter for BFL on all growth metrics, AUM, customer acquisition, portfolio metrics, and operating efficiencies. 
For rural B2C business, growth continued to be muted at 6%, which was planned due to the elevated risk and which has been called out by uh, Rajiv Jain in his investor calls over the last two quarters. Profit after tax grew 21% during the quarter and 26% during the year. Customer acquisition, 32.3 lakh new customers, disbursed 3.6 crore loans, and added a record 1.45 crore new customers in FY24, the highest ever till date, as against 2.96 crore new loans in FY23, which is a growth of 20%. The customer franchise is very strong at 8.36 crore, while cross sell franchise itself has crossed the milestone of 5 crore. Uh, the Bajaj Finserve app now has 5.24 crore net users as against 3.55 crore users on 31st March 23. And the AUM ended at 3 lakh 30,615 crore <coughs> on a consolidated basis. The risk metrics continue to hold well. Gross NPA, net NPA at 0.85% and 0.37% respectively. BFL holds a management macroeconomic overlay of 300 crore and during the quarter we utilize 127 crore uh, towards strengthening the ECL model and 163 crore towards loan losses and provisions. We have ended the quarter with a consolidated impact of uh, 3,825 crores. The capital adequacy ratio remained very strong at 22.52% with 21.5% being tier 1 capital. This was held by the capital raise in Q3. Our housing finance company, the 100% mortgage subsidy of BFL, continues to do extremely well. AUM grew 32% to 91,374 crore. Profit after tax grew 26% to 381 crore in Q4. And for the year at 1,731 crore, uh, by, it grew by 38%. Capital adequacy ratio stood at 21.28, with 20.67% being tier 1. DNPA and NNPA were again very strong, 0.27% and 0.1% respectively, uh, as of March 24. And in summary, another very strong quarter for both BFL and BHL. Now to move on to our platform company, Bajaj Finserve Direct. During the Q4 of FY24, Bajaj Markets attracted 72 lakh consumers on its digital platform of which 1.6 lakh became customers as against 84 lakh and 1.9 lakh customers in Q3 of FY24. BFSD lending, unsecured, secured, both BFL and partnerships disbursement for the quarter stood at 1,636 crore as again 1,664 crore. The card sourcing was lower at 20,673 versus 3603. As you are aware, and we had called out earlier, Bajaj markets had voluntarily decided to stop sourcing EMI cards post the RBI order on BFL. After correction of the deficiencies pointed out, BFL has already applied to RBI for a review, and as soon as RBI allows, Bajaj markets will also resume sale. Uh, during the quarter, Bajaj Finserve AMC launched two new passive equity funds um, and uh, one uh, large and mid-cap fund. And they attracted uh, good investor interest. Uh, we ended the year at 9,552 crore of uh, AUM, of which 3,400 crores was on equity-oriented funds. Bajaj Pinsel of Health carried out 9.3 lakh health transactions, having 2.48 lakh plus monthly active users. For the quarter, EBH had 18.98 plus lakh paying users, uh, which is almost double that of Q4 of FI23, with 7.17 lakh users having renewable products. As Devang mentioned earlier, these are two key metrics, uh, which is the paying users and uh, the payment number of payments we make. And the third metric is, of course, how many have the renewable products. Uh, Bajaj Finserve Health also expanded its provider network, which in, now includes 1,7,000 plus doctors, 5,400 plus lab touch points, and 2,250 plus hospitals. Uh, with that, I come to the end of my opening remarks. Uh, before we open for questions, considering the paucity of time, I would request the audience to kindly keep the questions brief so that we can cover more queries during this call. Uh, with this, I invite questions from the audience and hand it to okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. 
participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Swarna Mukherjee from B and K Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, ask for the basic, uh, basic segments. So, uh, I think when we look at how the exit growth rates have been in the different segment, I think retail lines are looking slower. Much of the growth has come on the back of uh, commercial lines and tender driven businesses. So just wanted to understand, first of all, uh, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, challenges uh, or, you know, enhanced cost of acquisition, et cetera, you are seeing in the industry in these retail lines, which is preventing you to, uh, you know, accelerate the growth. For example, uh, motor OD loss ratio, uh, if I see for the full year is around 64%. Uh, so, uh, uh, would it be the range you know you'd like to operate at, or uh, can there be further headroom for growth uh, in this? So, if you can give us some sense on how do you, which areas you want to focus on in FY25 to drive growth uh, in the GI business? Uh, that is the first question, and also wanted to hear your comments on the higher expense ratio that we reported for this quarter in Bajik. And uh, on Balik, I wanted to understand that uh, for FY24, the 37th month persistency uh, seems to have uh, recorded a drop. So uh, what has happened uh, because of which, you know, in this cohort, we are seeing a challenge. And uh, also, uh, if you can give some idea about how how, how should we think about VND growth and margin for FY25 in Balik. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I think, as you know, on the VNB margins or combined ratios, we do not give guidance, particularly in insurance where, you know, nobody can predict when catastrophes will happen or what kind of uh, yield curve movements will happen. Uh, but if I were to summarize your question, the first one was the outlook on retail growth and whether it was a bit slower than what you anticipated in Q4, the expense ratio in... Uh, uh, Bajik, why it was higher in Q4. Uh, in Balik, uh, you wanted to uh, know the outlook on VNB growth. Directionally, I think uh, uh, Tarun or uh, Ripin will provide that. And uh, lastly, why there was a drop in the 37 month persistency. So I now hand it over to Tapan first to take the question on the motor growth and uh, Raman can support with the expense ratio. And then followed by Tarun and Ripin. So thank you for the question. See, at uh, Bajaj Alliance, our philosophy has been very clear from day zero. Wherever we see opportunity to grow, we grow that, you know. And if you look at the retail lines of business, we're still uh, the, one of the large players in the Indian market. Uh, if the opportunity is not seen uh, as per our uh, uh, pricing or as per our uh, comfort of combined ratio, then we slow down because it's cyclic in uh, nature. Business, you know, is not something which... Uh, has always been constant. So if you watch over a long period of time, it's always cyclic. So opportunity again comes in and then we again you know, uh, grow and uh, take our place. But we would never be aggressive when the uh, market is not conducive for uh, high growth. Uh, Q4 normally, if you look at most of the years, uh, retail gets aggressive in Q4 because the way the generational business is structured, a uh, lot of commercial business happens in uh, April. You no, know? first April is the date, and then is um, September, which will be there. Uh, while if you look at towards uh, uh, JFM, uh, it's mostly retail uh, business where the aggression uh, comes in. That is how the GI business gets structured. Uh, so typically in Q4 in retail, uh, the aggression of the market uh, increases uh, uh, beyond our comfort level, and that's why you'll always see a bit of a slowdown in uh, Q4 retail. But again, the next quarter, typically as the cycle as we have seen in the past, uh, the next quarter again gets you know, much more uh, easier. So it's a, it's a, a natural cyclic uh, performance. So there's nothing in terms of uh, that uh, we have a strategy 
are slowing down or no or looking at uh, wherever the opportunity comes uh, and we saw opportunity like you rightly mentioned in commercial we did that we saw opportunity in crop we look at a q4 growth it's over 30% it's much over the market growth of no uh, 12% and and q4 so it's about uh, uh, close to two so the three three times like it's exactly a much higher growth than the market so the company i would say has done very well in terms of q4 growth and in terms of the positioning where it is retail obviously as i mentioned to you is over aggressive then we tend to slow down now uh, that's the answer on how it looked like so over to you raman in terms of taking the other questions yeah i'll take the question on the higher cost ratios i uh, see normally if you see uh, if i compare the cost ratio with the uh, whole year it looks a little higher but if you compare it with the same period last year quarter 4 and quarter 4 there's hardly any delta is 31.3% versus 30.9% last year so structurally actually nothing has changed uh, what is really uh, just moved up so opex there is uh, actually no change but uh, a bit of higher commissions in quarter 4 uh, has actually inflated the Uh, overall cost ratios for the company, and uh, that is cyclical because if you look at our growth in quarter four, it's largely coming uh, from some profitable lines where the commission rates are higher. Uh, so that's the only reason the growth is higher. Uh, the sorry, the cost ratio is higher. But like I said, if you look at it on a totality basis for the full year, we actually 1.5 percent lower compared to last year. I hope I that answers. in terms of the expense of management i think with the regulators come out um, our company is safely within that the regulator 30 percent expense of management and if you see most of the companies well, more than half of the companies have been no breaching that our uh, company would be close to 22 uh, 22 and a half grand remo right no in terms of where we uh, stack up so if you look at in the in the industry we would be one of the most efficient uh, companies uh, in expense of management uh, which has uh, come together and you compare that and that would be among one of the best in the industry uh raman if you want to substantiate to that you can add yeah you're right the actual number is 22.7% which gets reported to ida uh, so we are well within the regulatory norms sir just just a quick follow up on the first one sir uh, we were getting feedback uh, that uh, you know the competitive return pretty in the motor od side is possibly seeing some uh, you know better than uh, do you also see similar trends or uh, in in the micro markets which you are focusing on uh, see if you uh, look at it uh, the worry for the industry uh, is uh, tp you know there have not been a tp price hike for uh, uh, some years and in tp claims are inflations you know i think uh, and motor uh, tp ka cost is a reasonable uh, sum of business uh, so if you get into guarantee of it you'll actually see uh, where the volume lies od is fine well if you have lots of let's say uh, uh, flooding like bando flooding happens or no uh, delhi flooding happens or something no uh, goes beyond that is there but if you look at again um, the uh, accidents on highway uh, there was a dip after covid but now if you look at the frequency is no again moved up from it was so if you study these three four parameters then you can no figure out um, the answer that you've been asking for on a regular basis so uh, that is what no you should be looking at but now the frequency i see moved up sure sir understand okay on the bajaj alliance live side there were two specific questions one on the 37th month uh, bucket and the vnb growth uh, let me answer the first one first The 37th month, it's a, you uh, correctly pointed out, it has been lower. It's, it's a fact which is visible. Uh, this is a continuation of one specific bucket of one specific partner with a significant share yet in the uh, business, where uh, that bucket has uh, um, not really performed as, as the way we would have, uh, rather have it performed. and uh, this will of course now study itself the 37 month will study itself uh, going forward but we do expect that maybe a 49th month see every year this moves on uh, from one to the other 49 month could be impacted slightly but of course as a company we are a lot uh, larger in terms of size dependencies and partners is getting smaller uh, is lesser so this we will be able to rectify as we go uh and uh, overall our persistency as you know uh, for all buckets has been up 
and directly that shall remain. Uh, 13th is 84.3%, 25th is at 72.7%, uh, 49th is up to 64 and uh, the 61st is first time upwards of 50, uh, 52. And these are all uh, moving up only. In terms of VNB margins, you asked, and should be correctly answered, that we will not uh, ever give a forward-looking statement. But directionally, I can uh, tell you, you, you know about the history of the company. The company has had a turnaround in the last uh, five to six years. And uh, uh, we've moved into positive territory on margin about uh, five, six years back. And the direction is only up as we now have a steady scale, uh, a steady product mix. Uh, cost efficiencies are now getting thrown up. And uh, uh, for the last two to three years, there was a disproportionate amount of money getting invested in new partnerships that we were uh, investing in. Hence, uh, here on the story will remain positive. Of course, the, you have to, as Srini also pointed out, you can't be 100% sure about the way the uh, yield curve is going to be. The non-power funds particularly get impacted by that. Um, so largely, uh, these are the reasons where uh, we see a trend going up, but of course, we shall not be able to give any forward-looking uh, uh, statement. Uh, Vipin, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think just just on the persistency to reemphasize, uh, if you go previous year, uh, 25th month was down by about two 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 percent off, and it's a flow like Tarun mentioned. So last year it was 25th uh, month, this year it is 37, and next year probably 49th may have something. So it's a book we acquired about three years back, and that's flowing too. But uh, otherwise, we don't see any uh, stress on our persistency. It's been improving. Understood, sir. Just quick follow-up. Is is this on a saving? Month, I think, right? Sorry, sir. Uh, you, you your voice was not audible. Yeah. Can we move on? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon, and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. So, uh, two uh, quick questions from me on the on the motor side. Uh, you know, uh, I noticed that uh, the, there have been some good uh, reserve releases uh, for budget in the latter years. So, if you look at uh, sort of FY21 onwards, uh, the reserve releases have been quite good. So, uh, you know, can you uh, sort of explain what's happening over there? Uh, and uh, second, on, on life insurance, uh, there is some chatter that um, uh, that uh, the regulator is reconsidering, uh, you know, uh, on the surrender uh, charges regulation. So they had uh, floated a draft and then rolled back uh, a large part of it. And now uh, I think there is some talk of again implementing maybe part of it or in whole or I, I don't know. So uh, I'd like to get some um, color from you on, on that aspect as well. These would be my two questions. <coughs> yeah, Amar, would you like to take a question on more, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'll take that, Srini. Yeah. Uh, so if you look, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right that the reserve releases are uh, more in the recent years. And that's what naturally happens. If you look at the TP claims, uh, the way it works, most of the claims reporting uh, happens in the four-year period. And that's why if you see that the entire development is almost done in four to five years. So whenever uh, you'll see releases happening, hence, uh, tend to happen uh, nearer, which is, you know, uh, less than four year period. And that's what you are uh, seeing in our trends also. Uh, so it, it all depends on how, you know, the development happens. And our experience has been in four to five years, about 70, 80% of the claims get intimated. And that's where the release is happening more in the recent past. Uh, if I were to add to Raman's statement, if you look at the pay to ultimate, we probably have one of the lowest among the top companies even after fifth or sixth year on the motor TP book. So we are fairly comfortable there. 
Right. Thank you. And, and on the life insurance bit, uh, that, that question is pending. Uh, As a matter of speculation, we will wait to see more hard action from the regulator. We do not comment on... Uh, but is there some conversation? Because it can change, they will keep discussing. If it's daily out in the public domain in terms of an uh, exposure draft or a regulation, then we will discuss that. Right. I have one more follow-up. Can you split the loss ratios between retail health, group health, and government? And, and what's been sort of the comment a little bit on, you know, the recent government health uh, performance because you've written a lot of business over there. Uh, we don't give uh, micro breakups, no, uh, because that's part of our uh, business strategy. But some direction comments, what are you seeing in the government side? And, and no, no comments on that. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Supram Tim Datta from Ambas Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Supram. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. So the first question that I had was, you know, on the motor TV front, you know, like you like to point it out, that, you know, we haven't had a price increase. However, this year we have seen, you know, the loss ratio is improving at an industry level there. So what would be the trigger, you know, to get a price increase here? Do you see, you know, a scope for price increase in this segment this year or you know, that is also looking unlikely. You know, if, if you could throw some color on that, that would be very helpful. Okay, so for Motor TP, the way you have to look at it is, uh, the award, like Raman mentioned uh, just previously was, it takes three to four years to develop, no? Uh, so if you uh, look at uh, the current award uh, trend and how it's uh, moving and the frequency which is moving up in terms of number of uh, road accidents on, on, on death, and uh, the way court judgments are coming, I think when you start putting that together to see that if the same price would sustain in the future or not, no, because uh, it's a long tail business. In a short tail business, uh, it's pretty more comfortable to uh, look at pricing, uh, you know, in a year's time. But in long tail business, you have to put in a lot of factors to see, let's say three years from now or four years from now, uh, will this price be sufficient or not, or how is it moving? Uh, that is how this gets done by actuaries, you know, and then it is uh, presented. Uh, what you look at is uh, the, the book as of as of today. I think that is where uh, this uh, this kind of comes, and that's why previously, if I see COVID, the frequency actually dropped during COVID, and we all know what happened that time. Motor were not driving, and then uh, uh, post COVID, it started moving up. Now, if uh, there's a drop in frequency again, the roads had become better. And now if I look at this year's uh, 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 results in terms of what is declared by National um, Highway, uh, then I see the frequency actually has uh, moved up. No, So those are the parameters in which all this uh, decision gets uh, taken. Uh, but this is more complex than I told you. I just try to simply tell you how, to, how it moves up. So a lot of impact that you see is uh, post-COVID, uh, the drop in frequency which actually happened there. And that's why you see this impact coming in currently. But uh, more or less, the uh, impact of that is getting uh, over. And in, in the future, there uh, would be you know, a requirement of a price hike, is what the industry feeds. And is represented also uh, to the regulator. Got it. Uh, when is this, is this likely to, you know, when will this decision go to come to? Ideally, it comes in June, right? the, the price hike. Yeah, actually now, now as well, uh, the see the only uh, uh, if I say the only tariff which remains today is the uh, motor TP price, and the procedure is the industry you know uh, request uh, the regulator recommends to ministry, and then uh, it comes. I think that is how the procedure is. So difficult for me to say now with the election year uh, going on, you know how how it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Nistin Chavate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. 
Uh, thanks, Tof. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, on the uh, on 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 the on the on, on the motor insurance business. Uh, you know, just trying to understand yours. Uh, you know, your view in terms of sustainability of the improvement in claims ratio in the OD side. Uh, do you think? Uh, I mean, obviously, the, there was a big fall in the fourth quarter, but uh, even if I look at the full year basis, there has been a fair amount of improvement. So. Do you see this sustaining, uh, you know, especially, you know, given the fact that you mentioned that you've seen, uh, uh, you know, the, the transportation activity picking up again? So the way you have to look at it, first and with, vis a vis the market, no, how it moves. And OD is a short term uh, tail, no, um, which means that whatever the result, it's on your face, no, immediately you yeah. see the impact of it. So fall in OD actually shows that the company has been segmenting the um, uh, customers' uh, rights. No, it's a, it shows a reflection of good underwriting by the company, has been able to segment customers well, and that's why you see uh, fall. You know, in terms of uh, the OD ratio, because as I mentioned, it's a short-term ratio. So you'll be immediately able to see the impact. You no, know, in terms of what business you write, uh, and TPA is a long-term, so you see the impact a bit later. Uh, now, is it sustainable? Obviously, our uh, ambition has always been to be a good underwriting company, and that has been reflecting our combined ratio over years now. I can say it's not about one or two years. Uh, I think if you take it back to 10, 15 years, we have had one of the best combined ratios of the industry. That's the philosophy of our company. So we keep on you know, looking and writing um, very, very uh, minutely to see how we can get better at it. And that would be our focus, but how does it play out? Uh, I can't give a forward looking statement, but uh, as a philosophy of the company, we'd continue focusing on that. But fair to say that you have seen competitive intensity being lower because of which I think we are able to achieve this, or that's supporting no, us. Achieve. Competitive intensity is not lower. I don't um, agree to that. Because we, if you see, let's say if I take you back um, about um, six, seven years, or let me just re redraft my answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, whenever a new company comes into the market, uh, what do they do? Which business do they get into? Let's let's start from here. Uh, the first business they get into is motor. You no, know, any company. So with more addition of companies, uh, motor will always be competitive. So uh, I and let's say if I take you back about um, uh, eight ten years, then look at the motor portfolio of different companies. What what composition of motor did different companies have? You no, know, and fast forward today. Look at the motor portfolio of each company, and maybe for two, three years, take a trend and see how motor portfolio has moved up. You know, in let's say the top uh, companies and the newer uh, companies joined in. If the motor portfolio is moving up in companies, then the competitive intensity cannot be lower. You no, know? I think it, it's a simple way. It's all data based. So uh, instead of taking into perceptions or feelings, just look at data. You'll actually watch the motor portfolio in companies that are moving up which means that uh, the companies are uh, targeting motor more, which means that uh, the competitive intensity is much higher. Sure, sure, uh, got it. Uh, and just on the health side, uh, you know, I, I, I probably missed this, but uh, you mentioned that uh, the increase in uh, claims ratio over here is largely a function of change in product mix. And uh, at the product level, you've not really seen any changes. Is that uh, what you what you mentioned? I, I yeah, sure. uh, yeah, that is uh, that is how it is. So let's let's look at how how does it operate. If you see retail business, no retail business has now uh, any business in GI business would have three components. One is claim ratio, other would be commission, and third would be um, expense ratio, right? Now, expense ratio would more or less uh, be the same for most lines of business, but would be more in uh, retail lines of business, lower in, let's say, uh, a GMC. Uh, commission ratio, again, would be higher in retail lines of business because it's individual agent's effort to get individual customers. In GMC, the commission uh, ratio would be much lower. No? So GMC would have a much higher claim ratio, but the overall combined ratio uh, at a higher claim ratio, maybe uh, lower or equivalent to the, let's say retail with a lower claim ratio because of the way these three things get stacked up. No, so if you have uh, written um, um, a good portfolio of uh, GMC, then your claim ratio would move up, which, which does not mean that the combined ratio has moved up. No, so typically the way to look at it is look at the combined ratios, uh, and that's what to answer. No, for the previous questions also just to, to tell you how to look at ratios. And then you get understanding. If you if you try to compare claim ratio claim, that's why in the previous case I said I don't want to answer that question at a micro level, simply because when you are doing that comparison, it does not uh, give you uh, how does it flow. Uh, combined ratio is the parameter in which you look at balancing how things goes. You no, know? so.
So if you look at overall combined ratio, you would find that the company is doing very good on that. Yeah, but some of your peers who sort of you know have uh, kind of you know sh uh, reported higher claims because of higher infectious diseases or you know probably to some yeah, extent. I, I, I don't comment on my peers, no. Um, uh, no, no, fair points, but but from our point of view, that is that is I not affected at the commercial level. About the business, I can tell you about how it looks like and about our results. No. No, no, fair point. So, from our results point of view, you know, these kind of factors have probably not affected us. Is what is a fair, fair reading to make. That's that's what I was coming to. Yeah, well, I think how do you build in your business? How do you look at it? How do you look at spread? How do you look at distribution? It's it's, a, it's more complex than just simple, no? That this is how it goes. Let's say to give you an example, let's say flood happens in one part of the uh, country. Let's say Bangalore had uh, floods, or let's say you had no. Uh, in Sikkim flood. Now, let's say as a company, you are focused only on Sikkim, and you have a major stake there. It will really impact you very bad. I say spread up all across the country, and Sikkim is a, is a, is a small part of the portfolio. It will not affect you much, no. So that's why when you when you see a statement like this, I don't say my my competitors or peers have uh, made a, a mistake in saying what they are saying. Um, they must have got affected on the on the balance of book that they have. Some companies will be more affected than other companies, but it all depends on how your business gets stacked up and how do you spread the risk and how do you know look at it. So. That's why making a comment uh, on a statement without knowing the details is not very fair to anybody, and that's why I don't do that. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Koda from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I, on on life insurance, I have two simple questions. One one is on Axis Bank. Uh, how much it contributed in the current quarter and full year uh, compared to previous year, and um, and and I believe the channel is becoming more and more open architecture. So 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 to counter that uh, challenge, what we are trying to do means, means I see in the fourth quarter our direct channel has done phenomenally well. So 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 uh, so the answer to that uh, could could be direct channel or or any other uh, channel diversification will play a role. If you can give a better color on it, it would be useful. That's on life. On, on general insurance, uh, 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 means means I have two questions and one data keeping. One one is your crop has been flat year on year. Um, so you know, we all know that every company will change EOM as they are getting closer to 526. So, so it is. Uh, I mean, it has been flat in the current year, and we have been always been a very good underwriter with the crop. So, so just wanted to understand that uh, with pricing maybe further deteriorating, or or your uh, your view on that. Uh, you see crop to come off compared to what it is today. That's one thing. And then second on uh, second is on reinsurance market. Means last year we all know that uh, commercial line saw a reinsurance hardening. Uh, how is the trend? How are your April renewals with respect to reinsurance market? And, and, and if it is softened, what is the likely benefit you will see through it? And, and lastly, if you can tell me NWP number for the quarter would be useful. So let me start with the life insurance question, Charles. So yeah. You asked about the Axis Bank. Right. Uh, See that it's been a stated policy. Uh, you heard me consistently, and we are clear about the way they're going. When we started off, access used to be uh, almost 35 to 40 percent of our business. Steadily, it's been coming down. Last year, FY 2023, it was 25 percent. This year, it is 23 percent. In Q4, uh, we grew the company at 17 percent. Access grew by 14 percent. Uh, so lower than the company. Uh, so the intent is, of course, at the same time, let me also just tell you this, that yes, it is going to be getting into multiple architecture. But I do feel that if you look at the customer uh, acquisition and also the current uh, space and access, there is a lot more yet to be done. Uh, despite the fact that uh, uh, we, we still had 28% of access share. Uh, despite the the, uh, you know, the fact that they have their own subsidiary, and uh, Axis grew faster than its peer banks. If you look at the numbers in the bank assurance space, so mm -hmm. overall it's been very beneficial uh, to Axis having uh, an open architecture, uh, and I guess that continues. Uh, 
but uh, but suppose you ask, but our market share in in Africa has remained stable compared to last year. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, it has been stable uh, at the same level as last year. Okay. Yeah. So, but I do not expect that it will. I mean, they're they're adding more players, but I guess that the pie is going to get bigger. And when we do our Bank of Southern Science, that's really what we bring to the table. Uh, that people, uh, it's not that you do replacement business, but you also do additional business. That's the whole uh, value prop. And I think that's playing out, uh, particularly in Axis Bank's case. And like I said, there is enough there to be done. So Axis will remain a growth space. Uh, but having said that, uh, we uh, do not have want to have dependency, as they don't want to have dependency on... Um, less number of insurers. Similarly, we don't want to have our dependency on one uh, distribution business. So the share is the share of access in Balik and contribution to Balik will come down, largely because we'll be growing. We are growing, and we will continue to grow our other businesses. Yes, uh, Balik Direct from a lower base did very well, uh, our fastest growing business. There were a lot of things that we will we got right. Uh, we got our technology right. We got our data slicing right. Uh, we added a defense channel there. Uh, there, there is, uh, we've been able to look at the portfolio management channel, how we handle wealth, uh, customers differently, all that which we'd invested in. And I we used to talk about it on our calls. All that has gone well and uh, directionally shall remain our fastest growing channel. Will it keep growing at the same pace? No. Will the company intend to grow faster than uh, uh, Balik as a company versus our peers, faster than the others? Absolutely. Uh, what numbers are going to be? I can't, of course, say it as of now. Uh, what we are additionally doing is that we are adding new business models uh, and we are adding new branches, a tier two, tier three, and even in tier one. See, traditionally, um, while most companies got a significant percentage of their business from the top 10 uh, metros or top 10 cities, Balik's share was not so. Uh, that is now falling in place, but there is still, even in tier one, there is a lot of business for up to date. And uh, now that uh, we have more and more banks, tier two and three uh, as well will be adding uh, more uh, branches. And that is going to give us a footprint, that is going to give us more agency, more business direct, uh, more servicing capabilities of branches of our uh, bank partners. We last year have added quite a few bank partners as well. These are smaller banks, uh, of course, not the size of an Axis or an IDFC uh, or a Bandhan for that matter, but yeah. a lot many. Uh, so that is uh, all that is a steady pace that's been happening. Uh, Growth shall remain uh, consistent and uh, stronger than the rest of the industry that we care about. Uh, and dependency of one uh, channel shall uh, be reduced. That's a stated policy of the company. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Uh, and, and maybe on life front skills, on, on uh, group protection, and this is wanted to understand your view. Um, it means we have declined for the full year and, and it is muted for the quarter. So, 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 what are the course correction has to happen with respect to the product has happened, and, and we expect to see a revival uh, going ahead, or, or you see the competitive intensity is still there and pricing is not appropriate. So, so you will be a little um, uh, cautious in uh, conducting that business. No, uh, Sanket. So that's a good question. Uh, you're right. We did struggle this uh, last year on group. It is more because we had dependency on only. Uh, two or three partners really, and uh, they were a disproportionate type. Same issue we've, we've, uh, we're trying to defray in retail, of course. Uh, group being a relatively smaller business for us, uh, we, our dependency was very high. And uh, uh, we directionally though uh, have, and, and one or two of our partners haven't really performed well to the various reasons, which I don't need to really get into. Uh, and uh, Q2 and Q3, as you know, we did degrow actually in group. So we were back to growth uh, uh, numbers in Q4, and we expect this to go ahead uh, in a uh, trajectory which is only positive. And we're doing that by diversifying into more partners, more segments. We're already quite strong in MFI. MBFC is something that we are steadily getting stronger. Mortgage, insurance, personal loans, 
Uh, there's a lot more to be done. A lot of these bank partners who are with us, uh, that's a steady place we can anyways uh, and from liabilities also get on the asset side. So that will remain uh, a growth engine for us. And uh, yes, uh, India is a competitive market. So it shall uh, always, uh, I presume more business in India is easy to do. So you will keep seeing that uh, competition growing in this space. Perfect. Uh, thank, thanks for your on, on generally, you can give the resource. Yeah. So on cross, if we 